Welcome to Everything is Kung Fu. I'm Santanu. I'm Roddy. I'm Santiago. Today, we're going to talk about fire. But okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, in the past few weeks, we've been doing earth and water last week. So fire is the next element up. And this one, this one can be very interesting because fire has a lot of interpretation to it, as water does. Yeah, we de- we kind of delved deep into it in the I Ching last week and got confused, or at least I did, by the connotations yes. of the uh, the Same element. Here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so, I'm going to be confused this week too. It's cool. I think you know. <laughs> here, we have a better book. We we have we have a second book <laughs> that we're going to be referring to, but I don't know. There's something about fire that maybe is a little bit more direct. Uh, mm. Water has a lot because water can fit everywhere and everything. Fire, fire seems confrontational. Yeah, so this will be interesting. I, I'm uh, this this is gonna y'all are gonna go on a journey with us because we're gonna discover as we uh, talk about it. But uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. Everything is kung fu. It's kung fu. It's kung fu. <laughs> like, where is he gonna go with this? <laughs> all right. So, all right. Let's. I always start with Avatar in The Last Airbender. So let's start there. So the Firebender in Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uncle is, Iroh. Uh, Uncle Iroh is amazing. Uh, the main character was Zuko, yeah. who had an interesting character arc. I don't know if we should. I spoil recognize it. the name. He's a bad guy. First episode, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Played played by the same character who played uh, Rafi- Rafio in uh, in Hook. No, it's Rafio. 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 Wow. Did I say That's Rafio? hilarious. Rafio. Yeah. Oh, so the the Firebender basically the style that was displayed, the kung fu style that was displayed, was Northern Shaolin. Um, and I remember Sifu Kisu, um, the guy who who did the movement choreography for Avatar: The Last Airbender, he had mentioned that that's kind of his main style. Like he he does them all, but that that sort of his style of preference. So it's characterized by like really long stances and long extended mm-hmm. uh, techniques. Um, and the way I see fire a lot is, uh, when, when I see it in Northern Shaolin is a lot of just explosive movements, a lot of like, they do that wushu stuff that you see Jet Li doing like those, yeah. those aerial kicks and, mm-hmm. uh, jump twist spin stuff. But, uh, what, what are some of your, your conceptions of fire in the martial arts world? Just kind of like what jumps to your head? Well, now that I've got Avatar in the brand, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I so when I think of like actors, if I think of actors who've done martial arts movies, uh, like Jet Li comes to mind. Mm. I think of Jet Li. Mm. Think of yeah, Fire. yeah. This isn't as technological, like physically focused as as a martial arts movie goes, but in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, okay. the villain I forgot the character's name, the mm-hmm. person who's. Boo-boo? Lubai. Lubai. No, that's Lubai's sword. She steals the Lubai Lubai's sword, the Jade Destiny. The 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 girl who steals the sword. She always is like, I don't know why, but that's what I first think of when mm-hmm. I think of fire. There's a certain passion, urgency in her strikes, yeah. a very energetic uh feeling. And yeah. she also has a style that's very unstoppable. Mm-hmm. That's her that's her modality. That's that's what she um goes into combat thinking she's she's the unstoppable object. Totally. Yeah, th- I, you, you're saying that makes me think of Bruce Lee. Like I think of Bruce Lee very much, even though he's the one who's at Be Like Water, he himself was very fiery <laughs> of a personality, at least. Um, you, you know, one of the things that his his whole thing, if you watch him in presence, is all about explosiveness, mm-hmm. right? He just explodes on the screen. Um, and his main style, you know what his main Kung Fu style was? Which, which one? Who? Bruce Lee. Like his first, uh, not first, but his so the one he Jen. kind of studied first, so like he seriously. Up with Jeet Kune Do, but he studied something before that. Uh, they made a whole series of films on his teacher. Oh no! Uh, uh, the, uh, oh my gosh, is it? It's not Wing Chun. Is it, it is Wing Chun. Oh okay, it is Wing Chun. Yeah, I'm sorry, we talked about that before. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Ip, Ip Man was his teacher, Ip, yes. um, but Wing Chun is known for a lot of direct linear strikes punching 
What midline? Right? Yeah, midline, center line, right? If you hit to the center line, you will knock them off balance, right? You completely take over their center of gravity, you know. So they're all about those chain punches, those repeated punches, <laughs> one right after. Very Ip Man famous too, obviously. Though. Yes. Yep. Yep. Those chain punches. To me, that's a. To me, anyways, that's a huge expression of fire. You know, like I agree. Mm. I think for me, when I think of fire in a technical sense too, I think of very tight stances exploding into very big stances. Mm -hmm. So I remember in a lot of the uh, trolley foot, the hunt sing that we did, yeah, yeah. at least in my early days, would be a lot of double guas, double, yeah, double beans. And yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Very intense. Very, very reminiscent of uh, yeah. Zuko. Yes. That's yeah. Character. Yeah. If you look I at like Zuko's that. movements in Avatar, like they're like he's got those long stances, and both arms tend to be like doing something long yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Um, and that is, uh, you know, our our like my main kung fu style that I studied for many years is chole foot kung fu, and it's it's interesting because a lot of the techniques that you were talking about like the back fist and and like when you do it with two hands mm -hmm. really expresses that energy um it, in shaolin there's mo mostly northern shaolin they have something called tantui which are which are road you know like like beginner sequences and uh and one of the first moves in the first tantui is going into a forward stance in the the kung fu forward bow stance not 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 the karate or taekwondo one which is it's wider the kung fu bow stance the feet are on the same line mm -hmm. right uh and uh and that's a long stance and then you have a straight punch extended forward and you have another straight punch extended back mm -hmm. huh. and that if if you and i was doing this with the students just today yes exactly and i told them to be in that front that front stance that bow stance and i pushed on his fist and he was able to resist me with perfect structure then i told him to do a wider stance kind of like what you'd see in karate or taekwondo mm -hmm. and i told him to extend his hand the same way and resist my push he fell over you know what i mean mm -hmm. so uh not to not to dog on karate or taekwondo they they wouldn't punch to the side like that they so for their center of gravity they punch even though their stance is wider they punch to the center right mm. that's how they maintain their balance but just to prove the point i told them like if your arm and leg are aligned but your back leg is not aligned you're off balance so that's why you have to make everything into that straight line and that has very strong integrity and integral structure so anyway uh that's a lot of the structure of northern Shaolin. okay this may be a tangent but speaking of structure yes um when i practice gua pun sao yes from like from uh, front stance to going into horse stance, mm -hmm. you know, overhead block. So you're doing a, a swinging back fist, a circular block, and a, and a big haymaker swing punch. Right. If I do that, if I do it and don't really think about sinking my weight or mm -hmm. sinking into the stance, mm -hmm. I pull myself over when I do the sum. Yeah. Like I twist too far. Right, right, right. And I find that bewildering yeah. still. Like, no, it's it makes perfect sense. So what, what's happening is it's, uh, I was talking about this uh, earlier in, in class today, actually, uh, a, a mix of the earth and wind elements. Um, it, we'll talk about wind next week, but just on, a, on this topic here, if you have a hungar structure, which is toilet foots, a lot of its shape looks like hungar, mm -hmm. right? The sow is a very hungar shape, but you have, uh, you use that hungar uh, shape, uh, but you use wind in your stance, you know, your footwork, mm -hmm. you'll fly away because <laughs> the punch is heavy, but if the stance isn't heavy, you'll fly away. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need that rooting in your legs, but you need to be able to move that root to absorb the momentum of that. Yeah. Like, Otherwise, yeah. Because I, I want to do it at full speed as fast as possible so I can get faster. I used to do this to my students. I haven't done this in a while where I'd hold the pads for them. You hit with your swing technique, whether it's a the swinging back fist or a swinging hook punch on, on my pad. Do you remember this? You swing as hard as you, as, with as much force as you can generate. And we'll do it 10 times. One, boom, two, Boom, three, I take the pad away. <laughs> and they fall over. Yeah. 
I, and then <laughs> I, I, yeah i <laughs> fell over uh, it's fire it's, ladies and gentlemen fire <laughs> right here but it's a lesson learned yes. too it yes. that keep keeping that explosive force and not letting it dominate you too not letting it be what tips you over exactly so there this is where it's very interesting fire is one of those things that can be tempered right fire fire can be extraordinarily destructive the West Coast is a perfect example of that with all their fire, forest fires, you know, wildfires, yeah. you know, for sure. But it also is the source of like us not dying by eating raw animal meat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Having anything that's been metal forged right. basically requires right. fire. Yeah. So, so the idea of fire can seem aggressive when you're first talking about it, but there is a real, like, even acupuncturists, I think they heat up their needles sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and some use electricity which is so there's something too. something healing about fire as well there's something very meditative i don't know about you guys but if i just stare at a campfire like yeah. i go into a zone yeah it's primordial too when you look at it yeah. there's something caveman -y that that that, that yeah. happens when you look at a fire totally. to connect with it totally people love camping solely to go have a campfire absolutely yeah. right you're drawn to the fire you know people um, love to barbecue and like yeah. that so, yeah. mm -hmm. so all right We've got our kind of sense about fire and kind of our feelings about it uh, in our own anecdotal expressions of it through martial arts. What do some of the texts say in martial arts literature, whether it's from the, uh, the traditional Chinese medicine of the creation cycle, destruction cycle, the I Ching, Taoism, what, what do uh, and also the book of five rings that is that is one of the books the book of fire uh what's what's one thing uh that that we found so uh, there's this interesting duality between the the book of water and the book of fire in the book of five rings okay in that book of water is highly focused on very specific techniques right. stances forms where to strike when to strike how to strike mm -hmm. Uh, and the <clears throat> the book of fire is about strategy. Mm. It's uh, it's mm. naming naming various strategies. Like um, you want to always be the one to lead your opponent, ah. and not be the one being led. Right, 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 right. Staying in command. So, yeah. Control. Right. Okay. Like being the lead dancer. Mm -hmm. Right. We were reading earlier that the fire related heart. It, I mean, fire related organ is the heart. It's the heart. Yeah. That makes Spoiler sense. Alert. Absolute sense. Yeah. Yeah. That is the <laughs> engine that drives everything. It's the passion and the zeal. I think that's what comes to mind when you think of a heart mm -hmm. as a symbol, right. which I think we easily associate with fire. Yeah. Santiago, find that chart of the creation cycle and the destructive cycle. Right. The right. Roddy, in the book of five rings, he talked about strategy. Um, did he ever talk about like even if you decide to opt for a passive one where you're sort of letting them you know what i mean like you you're almost letting them but okay let me let me let me give a concrete example sometimes in mma fights or boxing matches like a really skilled fighter will let their opponent throw all the hard big power techniques mm -hmm. in the first round because they want to see what they have. Yeah. So they'll kind of lay back, you know, or even goad them. Into yeah, absolutely. It. Right. Like, right. right. Even this is at the kind of the beginning of the, <clears throat> the beginning of the book, uh, the beginning of the book of fire, three methods to forestall the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three, three methods, Ken no sen, which means to set him up, mm -hmm. Tai no sen, to wait for the initiative, which I think kind of falls uh -huh. into. Uh, yeah, there about. you go. Uh, and then uh, tai Tai no sen to accompany him and forestall him. Uh, so that's when you and the enemy attack together. Oh. That's what that means. Oh, that's Wing Chun. That is Wing Chun. Wing Chun oh, is all about the simultaneous block and punch. Mm. They call Lin Siu Dai Dar. The, the, you're gonna, the moment they, they throw an attack, you block and counter together. Block and counter attack at yep. the same time. Yep. Attack, counter attack. In the creation and destruction cycle, yes. Uh, what, wood yeah. creates fire. Wood creates fire. Which okay. makes sense. Like yes. You need wood to build a fire. Yes. Fire creates earth. Ah, so it burns the wood into ashes ah, to the, the ground. ashes turn to dust to ground. Okay. In terms of the destructive cycle, water 
destroys fire, which right. like it douses it. That makes right. sense. Fire destroys metal, like it melts it. Oh, oh. Yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, it that's what you need yeah. to melt it. Okay, okay, okay. Something or forge something. Fire destroys metal. Right, right. Sure. Yeah, you can take a blowtorch and mess up someone's car. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a horrible usage of fire. Exactly. Quite an extreme example. It's <laughs> maybe too specific to have been made. You know, you know what came to mind. <laughs> there, there is. I did have a vision in my head, <laughs> and that was uh, there's a movie called Only the Strong. Uh, it's a movie about capoeira. Uh, oh, huh. I think I've seen that in, long, in the 90s, like early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It starts Mark Dacascos. Um, and it's going on the list. And uh, yeah, uh, the the main bad guy, Alverio, like I think he has like some car stripping thing that he they steal cars and they strip them for parts. And I think I, there huh. was like blow torches and cars involved. Of course. <laughs> It's funny in that movie. This is a quick aside. In that movie, it's like um, they would say the uh, Portuguese word, and you can tell they're Spanish speakers trying to speak por- Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and uh, and he would always translate uh, everything he would say, like the word he would say, like "Look at this Santo, a saint." You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Wow! After that conversation we had before the podcast about language, that's yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. It fits right in. I watched a movie with my friends. I think it's a Netflix movie. It's one of the many um, Indonesian action movies that's been coming out, like The Raid. It's oh, called yeah, yeah. Um, uh, The Night Comes for Us. Okay, if you've ever seen it, no, uh, no. We actually didn't watch the whole thing. I don't know where he got it, but we just he had the action scenes wow. downloaded. And just and we just scenes. we just watched the the action scenes. And I've looked it up now. The style is called Pentax Silat. Yes. Oh, if they're using yes, Pentax Silat, man, that is fire all right. the way. That's what I was thinking too. It's like a mixture. It says like in the description it's a mixture between Jackie Chan and John Rambo. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. Like they're there. I mean and if you watch the raid, of course you know like the, yeah. the level of brutality is like I mean, they set a new precedent. It's, you know? it's also like a pop that you feel to it, too. I think a lot of, I mean, and maybe I'm just talking with a Western influence here on the action movies I've seen, but it's a lot of following through. Mm. And I think fire, at least as represented by the raid and mm-hmm. the night comes for us, it's a lot of attacking and then getting ready for the next attack and getting ready for the next attack, like chaining your weapons and your actions together. Yeah, yeah. In a very artistic fashion. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That, that follows that makes a lot of sense the pentaxilat style but is... the night comes for us brutal too the action scenes were not very uh i guess friendly but that's i mean they're not supposed to be like yeah. if, if you're doing silat you know d- you better close your eyes if you got a small weak stomach because yeah. that's how it is right well yeah it's, so. it's also like the raid and like there's like there's all these crazy houses that they have to work through and there's like a butcher shop if you see the raid too stuff yes you remember hammer girl yes the and bat boy what you know, man what she does with the back of the hammer is unspeakable it's yeah. like oh my god that's and it's her brutal. brother right that has the yeah. baseball with the, the metal baseball, baseball, baseball bat. oh my god yeah i think if i need to watch these movies the yeah, hero yeah. is the only person to destroy the batman <laughs> the, the hero is the only person who destroyed the bat the batman it's oh, the a bat, pun. It's joke <laughs> Uh, what what are some of the things associated in traditional Chinese medicine with uh, with fire? What what's that list say? It's very interesting. The season is summer. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but there's growth. Growth is aligned okay. with fire. Like germination is in wood, which we kind of assigned to earth last time that we were talking about it. But growth that comes from that germination is in fire. Okay, south. Wait, is a direction? Is that storage? That's underwater? in that's in water. I know yeah. storage I know. water. I was wondering what the what the uh, equivalent was. Yes. For, for water. So wood germination, fire okay. growth, earth ripening, metal harvest. I guess like a scythe, mm-hmm. and then water storage. Interesting. But uh, as in terms of fire, the direction is south. South. Okay. I guess. I guess. I, yeah. In the United States, at least, the south is associated with a lot of heat. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Right. Uh, the color is red. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The organ is the heart. Yes. The opening is the tongue. Tongue. Yeah, that's interesting. Which taste is? Is that what they mean by that? You think? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the feeling is elation. Elation. Mm-hmm. Which okay. is that? That's interesting. I like that. Rather than urgency, I expected it to Rather, be like yeah, more some kind of heated urgency. Yeah. Uh, sh- laughing. Laughing. Yes. Laughing. Yes. Okay. A heath, as in like the landscape. Forest is in wood, but a fire is a heath. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, sunshine and the feeling of inspiration. Are you sure that's not supposed to be like heart? 
It just says Heath. I know it says Heath. Uh, it could just be Hearth. It's it's interesting. Uh, so so this one has a lot of what you mentioned. There's a few others in this book. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the root of Chinese Qigong, uh, Qigong by Dr. Yang Juing Ming. This is a classic text. Uh, there's also taste is bitter, and the smell is burning. Um, there's a yin, there are yin and yang organs. The yin organ, as you mentioned, is a heart. There's also a yang organ, the small intestine, because oh, it does all the work. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Um, let's see, tissue is blood vessels. Mm -hmm. All I'm getting from that is the red. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Right. But it, I, I don't know. I think in this case, uh, like, if I remember anything from like Tai Chi practice many, many years ago, mm -hmm. like the energy is sent through the body mm -hmm. via the blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the communication is, force. The, the blood is what delivers the energy to the rest of the body. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So there's a saying, actually, uh, Chi goes where the blood goes. So if you, if you direct your blood, to a certain area, like then you get more energy there, right? And if I remember anything from biology, which <laughs> biologists <laughs> listening might get, uh, might might Please have to correct me. Podcast now. Uh, <laughs> I, I the small intestine does a lot of work in breaking things down and starting to transport things, just huh. kind of like how fire melts, like the metal that you need to rework into something. Yeah, I guess the small intestine reworks everything that you've eaten. Into... Is something something usable? Oh, right, that's what delivers nutrients to the rest of the body. That's right. All right. Uh, Roddy, can you look at this I Ching and okay. and find what the fire trigram says? What I'm I'm going to look up the double trigram and see see if there's a if we find some interest because you know things like the I Ching there they have so many different interpretations to them. You know, it's it's just uh, kind of interesting to compare and contrast. So the fire trigram is Li uh, translates to Li. Okay, uh, it is light. Reason, clarity, middle daughter, which we had an interesting discussion about before this, flying bird, flame, cow, and weapons. Cow. Cow. The, mo the motion of the trigram is upward. Okay. Yeah, cow. That makes sense. But like, cow. I think they must have seen uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. Yes. <laughs> Fetch your love wash. So does that mean that rabbits are also canonically uh, are like fire? The teeth. The teeth. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. Um. Let's talk about middle daughter. What's what? What did you guys think about that? This is working off stereotypes of the order of children and the, yeah, how it kind of order. implants their personality. But yeah. um, I know that we were looking at wind as the oldest daughter. Yes, which to me it's makes true. sense. And so the like middle child is expected to be more fiery, passionate, maybe less. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha from the Brady Bunch <laughs> was but, but that was uh, that was. Uh, it's not Marsha. What's her name though? Uh, the one who said that. So, so there is, wait, wait, oh God, I forgot. I haven't seen the Brady Bunch. It's Jan so Brady, I think. Is it Jan? No. Sure. What, what, who was the youngest? Hey, Google. <laughs> who were the Brady daughters? <laughs> it's not working. It didn't work. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's Marsha. I think it is Jan. Jan Brady. But I forget the youngest Brady daughter. But yeah, I associate fire with the youngest child, not the middle child. I mean, in my, I think the stereotype I was raised with, I guess, maybe is that the middle child is supposed to be a peacekeeper, you know? Right. But maybe it's a peacekeeper through fiery force. Maybe, yeah. Marsha, Jan, and Cindy? Cindy, that's right. Cindy, Cindy. So Cindy, so yeah, Marsha's the oldest, Cindy is the youngest, and Jan was the... They had a whole Saturday Night Live, like gag on that like she would make regular appearances on the newscast uh -huh. just co constantly complaining about everyone giving um attention to marcia <laughs> <laughs> but by the way i didn't realize this but apparently the birth order effect has been disproven oh really that it, that it doesn't actually affect your personality after all hmm. Hmm. interesting so the double fire hexagram in the I Ching. And uh, I don't know, maybe if you want to dig through that, find the double fire. It's called clinging. 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 So let me read this. Clinging is the symbol of adherence. Doubling the trigram fire indicates fire and light. Its virtue is brightness, which reflects the attributes of clarity. Fire has no definitive form of its own, but clings to the burning object and thus is bright. The fire and light generated by the sun also represents a natural metaphor for intelligence. Interesting. The double brightness indicated by the hexagram clinging will require a strict adherence to what is correct, as well as uh, docile humbleness. This sounds more like a firstborn type thing. Wow. The outgoing energy symbolized by fire is constantly being used up. Therefore, it must have some enduring inner source 
that pre perseveres other otherwise oops, otherwise it would burn itself out that is deep wow right. that that went more metaphorical than i thought it would go in terms of yeah a, a so one to one it's interesting this this one defines it as adherence clarity and adherence as opposed to clinging clinging adherence it makes sense I yeah yeah i guess which i always thought was water yeah so oh, all right yeah i mean but i guess if you double the hexagram right so it's fire double the trigram double the trigram my bad. Yeah. but hexagram. once uh once something's on fire like yeah it adheres it's on fire yeah. like, it's, it's like, loyal to that source yeah, yeah yeah you need the destructive force of water yeah what what is what does this this thing say about so this one lee. gives yeah lee in this with the hexagram gives it a, each line is given a a definition oh now, what about the first paragraph? Maybe uh, it, <clears throat> the attributes of Lee are intelligence or reason and adhering. It represents fire or the sun, and its motion is directed upward as that of fire. Because of this qua is the or because this qua is the trigram of Lee doubled, it means exceptional intelligence or clarity coupled with strict adherence hmm. to what is right. Remaining modest and unassertive brings good fortune. Interesting. So good fortune. So it sounds like a purist. That sounds like an earth to me, but yeah. But there's like a cleansing yeah. power, I guess, to yeah. fire. Yeah. You could argue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does sound like earth to me though. In some ways. In some ways. Again, so much of this is up uh to interpretation. Up to interpretation. But um uh I, I had a an a, an interesting thought when I was reading through uh the book of fire in the book of five rings. Mm -hmm. There's one section in here called to release four hands. And essentially it means that when you and your opponent are equals, mm. when you're at odds, mm -hmm. uh when you're equals but at odds, uh, you have to be able to judge the situation as such and either give in, or if it's wide scale combat, um, push through and use a technique that your enemy does not expect. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of this time when I was at another school and learned an interesting trick. Um, and when in the middle of sparring, I was like, I'm not really getting anywhere against this person. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this weird trick. Mm -hmm. And it was like this kind of like, a jump scissor like one mm -hmm. where you put one leg in front of them one leg behind yep. the knees yep, yep, and drop yep. them after yep. like holding onto yep. their, their gi or their top the golden scissor takedown yes. yeah and uh, i had never done it before and i've never done it since because she was mad <laughs> 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 because we don't usually do takedowns in kung fu <laughs> yeah yeah oh man that i used to use that one all the time in my first kung fu school <laughs> so much fun it, it, it's right. so much fun but i didn't ever roddy I, I could be a dummy i could be a dummy for you yeah you could, yeah you could, uh, you could practice it on I, me yeah get me of course get me. <laughs> I, I i like that that that, that experience uh it, it's funny because um i i similar story with me roddy like in my first kung fu school uh i would throw that technique in the spot because back in those days this was the 80s we sparred <laughs> we sparred full contact they didn't yeah. care you know? <laughs> and so head injury was uh, yeah so i remember seeing two people doing this in, in movies mm -hmm. i saw bruce lee do this on kareem abdul jabbar and then i saw, <laughs> and then I saw um uh, Mr. Miyagi doing it on Daniel when he was oh, training yeah. on the, the baseball field. Okay, yeah. that I do remember About too. That. So I was like, I'm going to try this in sparring. And, and I got people with this left and right until I sparred the upper ranks. He saw it coming and smashed me. Mm -hmm. So uh, so he told me afterwards, after he smashed me, he's like, if you want to try something like that, you got to throw something at my eyes first. So he's like, throw a spear hand to my eyes, make me blink, and then throw it. Or a me. rag. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, if you try to jump right at me and do that, I'm yeah. just going to step back and smash you. You know? He's like, Which he's both like, of those feelings, I think, are also fire. Like yeah. Stopping something that's coming that's Absolutely. visible and also that being the like, person that attacks you. That earth, feels maybe? more like earth. Like yeah. Stopping feels more like earth because you're just halting every every bit of momentum. The immovable object thing. Well, yeah. it, it would have been fire if I, <laughs> if I came at that <laughs> and then he stuck a sidekick right in my face oh, as yeah. I was oh. doing that. <laughs> and you have to aim your crotch at them. <laughs> yeah. Come right um, in the middle. But what was what was interesting, right some, street. something that he mentioned is that the reason why it worked uh, for me against all of these other folks is that they weren't expecting it. They were yep. lower rank. They didn't expect it. Yep. You know. But when yeah. it's fire versus fire, as an ex experienced person, then you have to use a different strategy. Mr. Rick once did uh, uh, my teacher a long time ago. I remember I was like, I don't know if I was getting testy or something like that, but I was trying new things. And he did a fireman wheel on me, like a rooster wheel. So he like he, it's like you when you grab the side of the neck and also the legs and you flip somebody kind of like a star <laughs> shape. And he did it perfect. He was. 
was like, I was really young, maybe like eight, <laughs> nine. So he flipped me and I landed on my feet and he, I was just kind of like stumbling backwards. And I was like, so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, he used to uh, spot people for practicing flips. So he, would, wow. so he, yeah. he, uh, he knows how to take you and like, put you in a full 360. Yeah. And Cause like, he, he simultaneously like ended my day, but <laughs> also saved me. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Um, yeah. So with, with, with regards to fire, it's, it's clear that it can, it can be seen as a very aggressive for like in terms of like martial arts movie mm -hmm. actors, we've identified almost what I would consider like the Clint Eastwood types, yeah. you know, that would be like, you know, I'm just here and I'm ready to set whatever gets in my way on fire. Right, judge, uh, jury, and executioner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unlike oh, someone judge like <laughs> someone like a Jackie Chan, mm -hmm. where you'd see uh, more of a, a character arc, you'd see a little bit of a growth. Sometimes you'd see the person get taken down, beaten a few times, you know, before they uh, come back. You know that that kind of thing. Also, Jackie Chan typically wants to escape. Yeah, like his goal is typically not to come and destroy the opponent. It's yeah, right. like, oh, the opponent has abducted me or something crazy. Right, right, yeah, yeah, and that you know, and he's parkour. You know, yeah. he, he's uh, like considered <laughs> like the unofficial <laughs> master of parkour without even knowing he was doing parkour. You know, um, but uh, but with when it comes to fire in one's approach and mindset, what do you all think? Like attitude, do you see like an extrovert like? someone domineering or can it be more subtle than that? Well, I was thinking more like ego versus id. Mm. I think if, if I think a, a, like a downside, a flaw, if you let your too much, too much fire take over, it can be too much ego and too much uh, like, like confrontational zeal, almost like a passion. Whereas if you are able to tamper it and also appreciate it at the same time, I think it's more so a confidence. That's what I associate with it and a passion. I like the confidence piece, you know, because that, and I think that's what martial arts can really give people is that it can give them a sense of confidence, but it needs to be checked, mm -hmm. right? Because that can quickly spiral out of control. So as Ice Cube says, you need to check yourself before, before you, you wreck, wreck yourself. yourself. <laughs> I love it. We all said it. I love it. All right. Well, thanks for listening. That was the Fire Podcast. Next week, we will talk wind. Until then. Everything is a kung fu. It's a kung fu.